On his 70th birthday, Russian President Vladimir Putin met with the leaders of other former Soviet republics, and he called for the resolution of conflicts that erupt in the region. Of course, Putin is directly responsible for launching the biggest war in recent history in this part of the world. Russia's invasion of Ukraine was aimed at reasserting Moscow's control over part of the former Soviet Union. Instead, this increasingly disastrous war has weakened Russia's influence across the region, including here in Central Asia. Unless uh, something uh, changes dramatically and Russia rebounds, uh, we will see uh, Russia's role certainly uh, diminishing uh, in uh, Central Asia for sure. Kadir Toktogulov is a former ambassador to Washington from Kyrgyzstan, a small former Soviet republic with close economic and security ties to Moscow. To see you know, this kind of uh, uh, attack uh, by Russia uh, against Ukraine was certainly disorienting because it sort of showed uh, the things, terrible things that uh, Russia is capable of. Of the leaders of the former Soviet republics, only Alexander Lukashenko of Belarus has publicly supported Russia's war in Ukraine. Russia conducts joint military exercises with its other four mutual defense treaty allies. But when it comes to the Ukraine war, they have all stayed publicly neutral. And that includes Kazakhstan. In January, the authorities here used deadly force to crush a violent uprising that left dozens dead. Moscow answered an urgent call for help from the Kazakh government, leading a deployment of troops here on a brief peacekeeping mission. You can still see burn marks on some buildings after the violence last January. Russia came to the Kazakh government's help in its time of need, but the Kazakh president has made it clear he will not be getting involved in Moscow's war in Ukraine. As Russia's military faces more and more setbacks in Ukraine, tensions have exploded in other areas long seen as Russia's backyard. Deadly fighting raged across the border between Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan in September. Meanwhile, hundreds died in separate cross-border clashes last month between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Moscow refused a call for military assistance from its treaty ally, Armenia. And now the Armenian government is working with the European Union to negotiate a settlement. <laughs> Moscow is on the back foot due to its destructive war of choice. And that's leaving a growing power vacuum across the former Soviet Union. Ivan Watson, CNN, Almaty.